Good morning to all of you. Welcome at this uh, webinar uh, titled From Outsourcing to Selling in India. My name is uh, Maarten van der Schaaf. I'm the director of India Connected and the moderator of uh, this session. Um, I have the pleasure to welcome uh, Mr. Jan Linse, CEO of uh, ARS Traffic and Transport Technology, who is uh, based in the Netherlands. Uh, Good morning. Yeah. Thank you for, uh, so much for, for being here. Good morning to all of you. Thank you, Martin. Thank you for, uh, for having me. Pleasure. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, once again, uh, good that you're, uh, that you're here, that you can make the time and that you are willing to uh, share your uh, experience of uh, 20 years uh, doing business in, uh, in India. Um, before we start, I would like to give a bit of a background uh, to all the listeners uh, about the organizers, uh, India Connected, uh, my firm, and Maya and Vidorno. Um, India Connected is the, the number one uh, Dutch advisory firm for uh, companies that want to do business with India, that want to enter the market, that want to export to India, um, but also want to uh, manufacture in India, of course. Um, and we are based in Amsterdam. Uh, we work closely together with our German neighbors, uh, Meyer and Vidorno, uh, who is a bit bigger than we are, as the country is bigger. And uh, Maya and Vidorno has their head office in Cologne, and they have four offices throughout India. So in Delhi, or even five, Delhi, Mumbai, Pune, Bangalore, and Chennai. Uh, they were founded in 2000, so they are, have experience uh, of over 20 years, uh, like, uh, like Jan's uh, company uh, has. Um, and uh, together we have a team with over 150 employees in India. Uh, and we service uh, clients from all over the world, but well, uh, sp specifically now the listeners are coming from uh, German-speaking countries and Dutch-speaking countries, um, and we we really um, uh, we really are a one-stop shop uh, for India. We help clients with well, you name it, market research, market entry plans. Uh, we recruit people, employ salespeople also for our clients. We set up entities, joint ventures. We advise on HR, on legal matters, uh, fiscal matters. Uh, we also uh, have, a, have a back office of solution for exporters. So it, it becomes easy for, for foreign companies to sell in India, uh, also to invoice in Indian rupees, and uh, we can also take care of the logistics. So, yeah, that's just in, a, in, in brief what, what we do. Um, before we get started with the interview, two more things. First, the practicalities. Uh, as you understand, you're all on mute. Uh, Jan and I cannot see you, um, but that doesn't mean that we, that we uh, cannot listen to you or, or hear you. Uh, so you can share your questions uh, in the chat. Please do so. If you have any questions, uh, add them to the chat. If you have them already now, put them in. If you have them uh, during the during the conversation, we're going to have add them there. Um, I'll try to, uh, to 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 yeah to get back to these questions and and and, and uh, pose them to to Jan uh, during the conversation at the end of the conversation. And if it, it doesn't work out because there are too many questions, we'll get back to you uh, by mail. Um, secondly, also practicality is that we are recording this session, so um, we will share it with you afterwards, and uh, you can watch it back later and uh, share it with colleagues uh, who might not be able to uh, to be with us here now. Um, all right, one more thing before we start our uh, talk, uh, Jan, uh, just to also to get to give you a bit of background of who is uh, listening uh, and, and, and watching today. We have set up a, a poll with four questions. Um, maybe if we can get the poll on the screen, then um, we get some information uh, about the listeners. So there are four four questions. Um, 
as a moderator, I cannot see if this is this is working, but hopefully it is, and then I'll see the results in a bit. Martin, if you click on the left on polls, then you can also see the uh, the answers. The answers. Ah, I see. So are you outsourcing to India? Uh, Thirty-three percent uh, is outsourcing, but still people are voting for this. Sixty percent is not. Are you selling in India? Well, over 70% of listeners is already selling in India. And how do you sell in India? Is this directly via distributor, via local sales office, or not selling yet? Um, what do we see here? A bit of a mix, uh, most via a distributor. Some do direct sales, some do uh, via local sales office. And of course, a bit that is not selling yet. Uh, this is a nice uh, question, of course. Will India be a focus market for your sales team in the upcoming five years? Um, I mean, far big majority is saying yes. And some people, of course, that might, might be why they are also listening uh, to this uh, webinar is uh, they don't know if it should be a focus market. market. So that's also interesting uh, to talk about, uh, Jan. Good. So, if everybody's got ahead as voted, um, we uh, we start a conversation. Um, so the topic is from outsourcing to selling in in India. Um, I already quickly mentioned, uh, Jan, uh, you started uh, in India over twenty years ago. Um, but maybe can you, can you, uh, because of course I can say this, but I think it's best if you, uh, introduce shortly your company and what business you guys are in. Uh, so, so can you give us a short introduction on what you guys are doing? Yes. Happy yeah. to do so, Mark. Sure, Mark. Well, as well, a name of our company, um, already, um, says we're doing technology in uh, transportation. Um, we're doing that now and we're doing that 20 years, uh, uh, we did that 20 years ago. So we are what you call a product market focused company. So we have technology products for the transportation market. And that's what we do initially uh, in Europe. Um, and we started the company in 98 um and in 2001 we started in india so um if you look at it with a bit of uh, um, historical uh, uh, consciousness uh, we more or less uh, started uh, within india and in the netherlands uh, uh, simultaneously well, what's our company doing um and not that the focus is on that subject um but it, 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 it gives some background absolutely it's interesting to hear a bit uh, yeah so what we do is we provide the technology products um that are required to keep us moving and over time we have focused on several sub segments so rather than giving you an abstract view on uh, how our market is subdivided i give you some examples so our business is, for instance, the business of urban traffic management, make sure that uh, there are green zones in, um, uh, in municipalities by making sure that there is uh, uh, what we call network management, that all the traffic control uh, systems are aligned to each other. Um, that's software business. Um, we provide enforcement systems, um, uh, systems that ensure that people are not speeding, are not entering specific parts of the municipality, uh, that uh, uh, dangerous hazardous goods, uh, polluting goods are not transported where they should not be uh, transported. That's partly hardware business, but also mainly a, uh, a software business. Um, uh, uh, as you probably have experienced yourself over the past 20 years, uh, the traditional 
steel and concrete um, structure of uh, mobility in general has changed more and more into a technology business. Mm. And the, the car at present is more a lot of electronics than a lot of steel. And we recently got the, the alarming message uh, from the southern part of the Netherlands that the car production has stopped because the chips uh, production uh, uh, has stopped. And that's actually how it is. Mobility has become a electronics and software business and rather than a steel business. Yeah. So, so next time, Jan, when, when uh, I get a speed ticket on the, on the railway uh, or on the, on the, on the highway, uh, then um, then it's your technology that that has uh, basically got me that fine, or is that in, in, in the Netherlands we're market leader in average speed enforcement systems, or as we call it in the in the Netherlands, trajet controller system. Um, so the majority of the tickets uh, you receive uh, um, are us to blame. So I'm uh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, but that's, but, that's, but that, uh, the societal impact is that 80 percent, 80 percent of all accidents, all casualties, all fatalities in traffic are caused by speeding. So, um, of course, uh, ab abiding to the law, uh, we make the country uh, more healthy and more safe. So that's the good thing. Yeah, of course, of course. But that's at least something people can directly relate to. Yeah. Um, Okay, so that so that's that's what you guys are doing. Your 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 software is is, is, is a key component of your of your business. Uh, so I imagine that also the title of the session is of course from outsourcing to selling. So you started with outsourcing to India, or and, and yeah, the, the, one of the key challenges in 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 the Netherlands and no doubt in Germany as well that it is very hard to get good technicians, good technicians in electronics, good technicians in software. So growth is uh, constrained by having those people available. So the logical step is to start looking for uh, uh, augmentation uh, possibilities to add people to your, to your team. And that's the reason why we ended up in uh, in India. Um, it uh, checks all the boxes with respect to the uh, shortages uh, that we have. So indeed, that was the uh, start. Purely, um, I would say, strategic, opportunistic, seeing to it that our capacity was um, increased. Mm -hmm. And and uh, so so. You, did you compare countries with each other, or was you like were you immediately convinced that you had to go to India, or? Yeah, well, as, uh, being an entrepreneur, uh, I first started to make a lot of mistakes. So I, uh, uh, I, I I started with having contracts in uh, with companies in other countries and people walking away from contracts and. Uh, 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 ending up in the result in in the situation that I could not support my my clients any longer because I I only had a contractual relationship. So I said, okay, I need to have this under control. I better have a long term fixed relationship, best with my own company. And then I uh, I started in South America in the wrong time. So Argentina. Very nice country, but uh, it uh, uh, in the end of the uh, 90s it uh, ended up in a in a bad situation. So then I started thinking: so what are the parameters? Uh, what are the boxes that need to be checked? Um, and uh, for each business, it will be different. But for software business, it's about: uh, do you have the right type of resources? Uh, do you have the continuity? And in the end, uh, one of the factors was also, is this perhaps um, a market that we might get back to? Um, was not the main factor that we uh, used in the selection of the country, but it it, it played a role. Yeah, you, you, it, uh, you don't mention even uh, salaries. Uh, you mentioned more the lack of people in the Netherlands and the, yeah. the availability of other people in India, but not. I'm 
Yeah, so, well, salary was of course important, um, but um, well, let's be honest. We in in the Netherlands and probably also in Germany, we pay the highest salaries uh, worldwide already. So everything is better. Huh? <laughs> and 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 India was good, but um, compared to India at that time, uh, Argentina was also good. Indonesia was also good. Uh, so. Let's say all other countries are reasonably well, but there are more factors than salary uh, alone. And in the end, uh, as in other businesses, it's not only about salary. It's also about effectiveness. Uh, are you able to communicate? Is there an IT infrastructure that allows you to uh, interact? Uh, this all has cost uh, impacts and salary also has a cost impact. So yes, it was a definite plus, um, but um, the other factors were as important. Yeah, and and uh, what I find interesting is that uh, if you talk about IT outsourcing, it's uh, Bangalore is of course uh, dubbed the, the the Silicon Valley of India. Uh, Hyderabad is known for the uh, known for its IT capacity. Pune in recent years is is known as a as a place where a lot of foreign companies uh, settle. Uh, you went to a completely different place, uh, Trivandrum, in the absolute south of uh, of India. Why did you choose to 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 go there? Was this pure coincidence, or? Yeah, I I, I could tell a, a a beautiful rationale story, but let's be honest. Now it 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 was coincidence, but with the benefit of of hindsight, uh, I I would have done I would have made that choice. Um, uh, by that time, nearly 20 years ago, um, Bangalore and Trivandrum were not that different. Uh, Bangalore has a, a climate advantage. It's a bit higher up in the hills, so a bit cooler climate. Uh, but it's both at uh, the same uh, um, uh, region in, uh, in India. Um, so um, the climate is good. Uh, people are not that uh, that poor. Uh, there's good uh, uh, good welfare. Uh, it's it's a nice place to be, and uh, and that's for software important. Um, you need to have this uh, strange click in your head to understand uh, software development, and that's well developed in that part of India, Bangalore, Trivandrum, more than in northern India, where people are very communicative, very service oriented, but are not that great software developers. In this part of the of India, um, the universities are excellent um, and people really have this, uh, um, this software uh, uh, gene. Big advantage now, um, uh, Trivandrum compared to Bangalore. Um, I, I've often been to Bangalore, so when I have a hotel 20 kilometers uh, from the place where I uh, need to be, well, then I take three hours to get to my destination uh, in uh, in rush hour, and in Trivandrum it uh, takes me 20 minutes. Uh, so uh, the accessibility is much better, um, and there are good IT facilities. So at present, it's it's to be preferred uh, for me. Yeah, nice. Uh, interesting. Uh, interesting to hear. Uh, we hear this from other other uh, companies as well. That, that that smaller regional places, well, smaller for at least for for European standards, smaller. I don't know how many people live in Trivandrum. I think it's uh, somewhere between one and two million. Uh, so uh, it's uh, way way larger than Amsterdam. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And it's, it's a beautiful historical city as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Jan, when, when did you realize that India could also be a potential market for selling your services? Um, when was this? Well, when I first uh, set foot on the ground in India, uh, my first time I was uh, faced with the uh, traffic situation and uh, all of you um, having been to India will ha probably have experienced the same. So one of my first thoughts was, okay, there is a problem. Um, uh, the only thing I um, I was not really sure of whether the solutions we had in mind were also the solutions uh, 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 for India. And by that time, I also traveled to, for instance, uh, China. 
and I had the same uh, feeling, uh, same chaotic situation in China as in India, as in many other East uh, 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 countries. So the awareness that there is a market um, and that a possible solution could help was there from the uh, from the onset. But over time, um, the situation changed. I, I've seen the situation in, in China changing, infrastructure becoming rapidly uh, uh, better. And in India, I saw that there were, was a willingness to do so, uh, but the progress in improving the traffic situation was uh, was not there but well the need uh was present and the willingness of uh of india to look for solutions was present so being there for outsourcing markets gave me the opportunity to have a lot of discussions with uh with locals um and over time i've realized that yes there was need no there was not uh, an immediate solution but there was a willingness from the indian authorities to look for a solution, and th at that point in time, we started um, uh, to uh, to dig and to try to understand how the market uh, uh, operated and developed. So, so that was uh, because you mentioned basically that, like, basically when you started in in India, you already were aware that, of course, uh, traffic is is hectic in India. is is a chaos uh, from from a European uh, perspective. Um, and uh, but but well, initially, of course, outsourcing was your goal. So was this also in in conversations with your local team, or what role what role did your local team play in in uh, growing this awareness of hey, maybe we get in, can get into in touch with uh, Indian authorities to to uh, suggest our solutions. It more or less uh, developed gradually, but um, let's say over time, my people over there, I'm still working in my company in India with a lot of people who were there 20 years ago. Uh, so a lot of knowledge uh, was um, acquired by my Indian team on how traffic in, in Europe uh, operates. So they were the first ones to see that there is a, a real gap. Huh? They they uh, started uh, to understand that something like traffic management uh, exists and mm -hmm. that uh, traffic signals are not just there for cosmetic purposes uh, mm -hmm. to, to send some light over the over the junction but and that you can use that to to regulate traffic mm -hmm. so uh, during my my uh, sessions over there i went there uh, three four five times a year and i was there a week that was not the time um, I was fully able to understand it, but I had my conversations when I was there and uh, online, uh, and that gave me the impression that the that the Indian market was uh, changing, and that the awareness of the local people that there were solutions for their uh, their huge uh, problems were present. Um, but then the, the the big thing was that. Um, organizations try to more or less drop the solutions they have um, in hand, in our case in Europe, try to drop that in India. That does not work. And that awareness that was uh, initially not present, uh, initially it was tried, okay, let's try to, to just sell the products we use in Europe, sell them in India, and we very uh, rapidly came to the conclusion that 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 will never work. That the the gap in the evolution was uh, simply too large at that point in time. Yes, that's something we hear a lot huh, of European companies that have also have difficulty, but this of of selling high tech, high value goods and services in India, and uh, the reason is that that there is not a match with the, with the between the product and, and the market. Um, uh, what what was the the, the the problem for for your services? Which match was not there? Well, <clears throat> um, in India, uh, certainly uh, not 10, 15 years ago, uh, was not a country that could afford the type of solutions we're we're creating in Europe. And why are the solutions we create in Europe so expensive? 
And that's because we focus a lot on quality, quality, safety, what have you. Um, so 80% of the time we spend in the development of our products is related to exceptions and making sure that the reliability and sustainability of our solutions work. That increases the price and exactly those factors are not of immediate importance to, uh, to India. Uh, you, uh, they expect a system to be delivered, to do what it's supposed to do um, in a happy flow situation. And they're not too much concerned, at least at that time, what it will do after a year or after two years, uh, certainly not after five years and after 10 years. And everyone who has seen um, the, let's say, uh, service uh, operations in India uh, understand that selling and implementing is more important than uh, keeping systems alive uh, over a time of uh, five to ten years. And that's a different attitude in designing your products. So for us, uh, it became important to, on the one hand, transfer our ideas on life cycle management uh, to our Indian relationships because we feel that um, the life cycle costs are important and more important than, than just the implementation costs. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we needed to accept that the budgets were lower. So we needed to find ways to create products at affordable prices. So that's the challenge where we needed to accommodate the uh, requirements of our, uh, of our customers. And on the other hand, uh do some knowledge transfer on uh life cycle management so, so uh, what i hear you saying is that like uh it doesn't work when you just push your service like hey this is what we have this is the best quality in the world we do this everywhere you should you should have this that's not working but you do uh try to get into this dialogue that to 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 explain why you do it the way you do it but still you have to adapt your product so so um yeah. how can you give us maybe i don't know if it then might become too technical but uh can you give an example of how you uh ad adapted uh one of your services or products um uh, that it has become that could become cheaper to to uh, the cost price yeah yeah, we, I, I have many examples, so try to select a, a, a few ones. But uh, first, it's good to understand that those extremes exist um, and that there, in our specific business, there is a tendency to be very much focused on hardware and not on software. A client buys something that is tangible, they can keep in their hands, they can drop, which has a, a value because you can see it, you can touch it. So software, um in the netherlands and in germany has a value software in india has no value because you cannot touch it huh? so you you need to incorporate your software in a working uh, product so that's that's an important uh, concept because that's not something you tell and that is accepted at that point in time then there is the tendency um in india to go for the cheapest product and cheap uh, not in the sense that it is economical, but um, it works and it has the lowest cost possible. So that's the, how the market, the local market operates. And that's how we are uh, uh, serving um, the, um, the governmental market, uh, business to authorities, and tenders are often shaped to work on what we call L1 basis. So there's a question uh, from the market and the cheapest solution, the low cost solution, it will win by definition. Mm. So you need to compete um, on what the requirements are uh, and what the price is. So if the requirements are not shaped well, you will always lose as a Western company because uh, your quality is a bit higher, but it does not um, find any grounds in the evaluation criteria of uh, of your client. So, so, you need to, so you need to influence the requirements. That's basically what you're saying. 
Well, you need to tell them, um, I can give you a very inexpensive product, uh, but next year you will have to buy a new one. And year after you will have to buy a new one. And over 10, 10 years time, you will have bought 10 systems. And with me, you buy one, but it has maybe the price of two or three, but you can deal with it for 10 years. And that type of communication needs to be there. And, and my experience is, uh, same experience, by the way, in, 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 in Europe, is that you have your champions because it's a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. And the willingness of your clients to really listen and to try this um, is very much dependent on whether your client has ever visited Europe, um, has a willingness to look for a quality price ratio. And out of, let's say, 10 uh, prospects, 10 potential clients, and maybe one or two can be considered to be a champion and to consider this. And mm -hmm. those people are taking risks because they step out of line locally and they do something different compared to what their colleagues are doing. So it's, it's also choosing your battles, not trying to win over uh, complete India in one sales campaign, but mm -hmm. look to uh, who can be your market and who can also be the person that is really willing to listen to your uh, sales argumentation and put the, the facts and the figures on the table. Um, and in my experience, um, that works in the sense that out of the 10 times, eight times it does not work, um, but that's, that's sales, but two times it does work. And uh, there is a willingness to listen and the good thing is, uh, well-educated people in India, they can uh, calculate uh, 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 quite well. And if you, if you can stay to them uh, where the advantages can be, uh, can be acquired, uh, uh, they will for sure listen. Yeah. So uh, interesting uh, what, you, what you're saying. Um, uh, I, I was wondering, did you do the sales? Uh, did you do the sales? Did you, your Dutch sales team was involved? Was it uh, an Indian sales team? Was it a combination of, of efforts? It, it, it's a combination. I have my local people um, who over time developed their relationship to the Indian community. They have an excellent network. Um, I could never replace that. Um, it's very cultural loaded. Uh, there's a lot of let's say, uh, information exchange uh, and dealings uh, being continuously on the phone day and night and, 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 and being at impossible places at impossible times um, uh, for reasons that you can never understand that we will not be able to, uh, to copy. Um, so you need those local people with the willingness to do that. On the other hand, you're necessary as well because um, they they want to, to have this Western solution um, and trust, uh, confidence is extremely important. And while this local salesman um, can bring um, the network capacity uh, to the sales effort, they cannot bring the trust and the and the confidence part because there is more or less a, stru a structural mistrust between indians themselves uh, are you trying to sell me something cheap are you telling me the right story and that's uh, where we come in um, as uh, uh, dutch and german um, i think we start um, with uh, a trust factor um, and um, if we are just who we are and not trying to be indians but just being uh, naturals uh, and having a good support, local support, then that's exactly the right thing to do. Because um, that's what they are ex expecting. Um, and if you m bring that balance, then in, in, in my experience, um, that, will, um, um, that will convince them that they have the right partner. Yeah. So in summary, basically, the, 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 your local sales team is, is, is developing the network, is opening the doors, and at some point they say to you, Jan, now it's time for you to fly in 
and you need to be here because we're going to meet the big boss who is going to make a decision or not. Is that in practice how it works? Well, it, it's the, the decision making part. That's often the the part where you exchange uh, uh, proposals and where you negotiate prices and mm -hmm. and specifications. But to win them over to consider a solution that is not the typical Indian cheap solution, low cost L1, doesn't matter uh, how long it operates, but go for something more sustainable. Hmm. That requires interaction. So typically how I worked is that my, my team was inside the Indian uh, scene and uh, worked together uh, uh, with them. And my phone is ringing. My, um, uh, and they developed the network, developed the opportunities, um, and then uh, approximately four or five times a year, I spared a week. I went to India with a loaded program. I traveled from uh, south to north India in a week. I had uh, five, six appointments a day and was um, uh, uh, doing the next stage in what I would call business development. Yeah. I think business development is a bit different from sales it's uh, it's it's the it's the stage before in yeah. which you bring across what the uh the pros and the cons um of the proposed solution in the current conditions are it's also about developing the relationship i think that's uh, that's extremely an extremely important stage and that's where we can add value yeah, and uh, you already mentioned that uh, your clients are mostly governments, bodies, municipalities, cities. Um, so this, this business development was also, uh, of course, talking to these uh, people, government of officials. Uh, and, and what happened then? Was it indeed that, because in the end, you still had to apply, if you have to apply uh, for tenders, like in Europe, right? Or is there a way around this? No, it's uh, you need to be there in a pretender stage, um, and in 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 comparison to to Europe, in comparison to the Netherlands and India, um, what you do in India is you talk to the ultimate decision makers. So you do not go to the procurement office, you do not go to the operational manager, you go to the MD, to the president, to the secretary general. That's where you have your discussions, hmm. and the 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 culture is also different um in 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 the netherlands when you would go to the secretary general he would invite his procurement people and you would be sidelined to deal with those people in india um my experience is at that at the decision maker positions you have very ambitious people very curious people they they want to know how things work so that's where you have very interesting talks. Um, not saying that everything works out well, but you develop a relationship over there where you think alongside with the ultimate decision maker on the other side, how things could work. And yes, there are, are 1 million misunderstandings at that level, but there's communication uh, and there's business development uh, uh, happening at that, uh, at that point in time. Yeah. But you must you must uh, have the people in India that are able to reach out to the top of these organizations and make sure that when you when you are there you have that type of conversation and not that you are uh, somewhere stuck at middle management level. Yeah. So your local team, your local sales team needs to understand that and needs to uh, 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 fill an agenda that's 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 full with this relevant uh, relevant. Uh, conversations, relevant appointments, and uh, not with middlemen and waste your time on this. They must have the agility to uh, reach to the top. And that's, uh, I, in my experience, that's critical. What what challenges do you do you face when selling in, in India? Is, we were talking about price. Uh, we often also hear about when you sold something, payment can be an issue. Uh, what about contracts? Uh, what, what, no. Yeah, first of all, um, and you must realize <clears throat> when you're doing business development that 80% of your efforts are wasted. So that type of frustration, but that, that's universal. Um, but one should realize that, accept that, uh, 
it should you should transfer that to part of the fund. Um, um, but the difference is within Europe, we tend to um, delegate that to our salespeople and say, okay, you take uh, you take those efforts. In India, that's the type of effort you, as a decision maker from your own company, also have to take. You need to be there. You need to do that, and you also have to accept that uh, that part of the pain. When you are in in the contract, uh, um, then um, uh, making sure um, that um, that you make the arrangements for proper payments, uh, that's really a pain. I would say out of the uh, top ten, uh, number one, two, and three are making sure that you get your payments, um, and uh, that can be of many good and bad reasons. Uh, but you have to make sure that that is pre-arranged. Uh, the Indian people, they are very much focused on that themselves. And Europe, we have the kind of naive um, um, attitude that we think, okay, this is just uh, one article in the contract and that will be arranged automatically and we can just count on the fact that when we have delivered that the payments will be done, that's not the case. So um, there's too much to, to say about this subject, but uh, yeah. um, I, I, take care of those three items uh, um, uh, very much. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, of course, you have a good legal advice uh, uh, for, for your contract and, and because are you, you're dealing this your Indian team is dealing with this, uh, I, I imagine, or... Uh... Yeah, well, <clears throat> one of the main challenges uh, is um, that your product, um, uh, sending a product, selling a product, um, um, also implies that someone is receiving it. And you can be sure that when you sell a product, it will not be received by the MD. It will be received at that middle management level, that procurement level, they will uh, collect uh, the product and they will have to rubber stamp it. I have received this product and it's okay. So at that point in time, they take a responsibility. Um, and that's where the issue is. Uh, mm -hmm. Nobody wants to take responsibility because the, the impact of things going wrong is huge. Having a job uh, is, uh, is an asset in India. And when you have rubber stamped uh, the receipt of a product that later on causes an issue, uh, will cause the seniors, the MD, to go back to the people and say, okay, you, you said that the product was okay. Now I've paid them and um, uh, the product is not good. So mm -hmm. there's no one who really wants to take ownership uh, for the part that is uh, causing the pain with the client, and that's the payment part. So you have to make sure that prior to that stage, you really define how you are going to arrange this. And with software, I can tell you it's extremely complex because uh, going through an acceptance stage with software um, is also a pain in Europe and it's an even larger pain in, uh, in India. Mm. But it will be a lesser problem if your products are more uh, tangible, more um, standard, and then these types of problems are uh, are, are uh, of a lesser lesser issue. Mm -hmm. But at least you need to define the the sales to transaction uh, in the contract in such a way that uh, you think about the receipt moment, what will happen at that point in in time, and how before the transaction is over. Uh, the transaction is also contractually closed, and there can be no issue about this ownership part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. Uh, and and I, I like what you're saying is, uh, don't be naive about any line in contracts. Uh, so that's uh, so. So uh, probably you have a legal department in Holland, but you probably also have a legal department department in in in. Uh, in India, or do you use external advisors, or how does it? 
No, we 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 ha we have local staff dealing with it, but um, well, uh, you guys dealing with India uh, uh, realize that India is a federation with a lot of uh, states, each state having its own laws. Uh, so when you deal with uh, India uh, within uh, the outside borders of India, within the federation, you need you cannot be aware of all the. Uh, 20 odd laws uh, you uh, you will be dealing with. It's extremely complex. Uh, it's case law. Um, uh, we in the in the Netherlands and I think uh, also in Germany are used to constitutional law. That's a different line of uh, thinking. Uh, so do not um, do not think that you can deal with it yourselves. Uh, you you need to look at what's in the contract, but you also need to know. Uh, what's in uh, in case law, and uh, um, that, that's that's not possible to deal with that from uh, from the Netherlands or Germany. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe enough about the pain. <laughs> uh, let's maybe look at the at the gain. And 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 uh, I know that uh, of course the Modi government has uh, uh, is good in marketing. And one of the, the, they're promoting Make in India, and they're promoting also the Smart City program. And they, they, they basically said, like, okay, we have 100 cities that need to get this stamp of being a smart city. Um, and one of the mobility, uh, much better mobility is, is, is part of this. Um, are you benefiting from this program? Is this where you see that 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 indeed uh, cities have more budget to do something about the traffic situation? Um, yeah, can you say something more about the market and how the market is developing? Yeah, yeah. I I I'm um, I have a lot of people in my company who have all kinds of opinions on what's happening in the Modi administration, positive and negative. Hmm. Um, I've put it all on a heap, and I've tried to to get my own take out of it. And I've also participated in congresses where he was present, had the honor of uh, of, of 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 being there, and 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 hearing and seeing, etc. And my conclusion is, overall, it's it's very positive. Um, and yes, yeah, you need to understand it within the within the context, but the good. The good thing is there's a vision, um, and I would say there's even more vision than we have in Europe. Um, mm -hmm. um, if you look at the smart city concept, it's not about a smart city for uh, health or a smart city for traffic or a smart city for education. No, it's a comprehensive smart city, all of the important factors that have an impact on um, what the people are experiencing in, within their city are affected. So it's it's a comprehensive program that pushes um, municipalities to um, uh, the next century. And they had a kind of challenge between municipalities that had to fight for the budget uh, from the uh, federal administration. So the municipalities that did not have the luxury that they could first apply for a subsidy and then do whatever they wanted to do with it. Now they had to draw up a plan, and these plans had to be had to compete with each other. So that had a, a quality increasing um, impact. Mm -hmm. And then there is quite uh, quite some um, uh, how you say it governance uh, from the federal organization to look at whether the people are actually achieving what they have promised. Um, and you know, you have these award schemes in India, so everything that's doing well will receive a lot of awards. We receive some awards as well. Mm -hmm. um, um, but overall, I'm, I'm, I'm very positive. Um, um, of course, there are things where it goes uh, wrong. Um, they want to take a giant step in a very small amount of time. and it's people business and a lot of the people being involved they still live 20 30 40 years back and they cannot make that uh, change so a lot of these large projects they do not really succeed for obvious reasons but at least there is a very positive spirit and they want to 
to make this uh, step. And uh, to be honest, I, I also have good re relationships at the same type of government levels in, in the Netherlands. And I do not see that spirit. And that's, I think, the, the very positive part. There is, there is entrepreneurship at governmental level. They want to achieve something. They want to be there first. And uh, there is also a lot to win. It's a, it's, it's a huge country with a lot of uh, potentials, economic potentials, that require those smart city objectives to be materialized also to achieve the economic uh, uh, and, and welfare uh, objectives. Yeah. yeah so the, the ambition that's there is also the, you feel it when you're in India, of course, the energy that's there young, among uh, also young people. Um, maybe going uh, shortly to uh, your setup in India itself. Um, and uh, I, I was also looking at the, one of the questions that was, was asked. Um, someone was saying, if you look at hiring people in, in India, where, what, is the, uh, what are the criteria you, you use when you, when you hire someone uh, for your Indian team? Um, but yeah, so, so this, this is something uh, I would be interested to hear, but maybe also more in general, can you say something about your, your team, what you, your setup there, how, how big is it uh, the, yeah. that you have there? Yeah, I have 250 people over there, um, um, near, near 300. Uh, we have several setups. Our main office is in uh, Trivandrum, but we do projects all around India. Uh, we have them in Delhi, in Surat, uh, um, in, in Mumbai, um, I think some 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 ten places, um, um, and it depends uh, on hiring people. It depends on what type of business we're doing. Uh, our core business is software development. Um, that's where we create our products and services. We earn our money with the services itself, the services. So doing traffic management um doing operation centers etc so if we hire people for the operational services uh then we have different criteria compared to hiring people for doing our system and software development uh, hiring uh, people for your operations i think that's not too difficult there's a lot of people there's a huge market um, um uh, you need to Focus on where you can make the difference. Uh, again, when you try to work at a cheap level, um, there, then, then you will never be able to compete within India with the locals because the Indians, they can find cheaper people than you can find. Uh, you need to reach uh, for people that can provide that uh, added value, um, uh, that calls you to have less attrition, to have more knowledge within the company so your uh, service level your quality service level in your operations is is good but if you have good hr i do not feel that is very much of a uh, challenge mm -hmm. um, I, i've learned by the way a lot from my uh, relationships with management of the uh, of the touch uh, group uh, touch hotels obviously when i'm in india i i have to stay somewhere and I tend to talk a lot with the people, and and I always felt that the uh, everybody in India is willing. Uh, everybody is willing, but quality is sometimes very poor. But in the touch hotels, the quality is always top notch. And then I said, okay, how how do you how do you not only have that initial quality, but how are you able to sustain the quality? And so, what's the difference between this first step and the tenth step? And I say, well, that's simple. Keep on training. Uh, do not think that if you have given the initial training, then that's fine, then people will know what to do and they will keep on doing it. Keep on having training sessions and making people aware of the quality that, uh, that people need to have. And that's also how I, uh, what I did in my company, making sure that the operational services are trained continuously. So that's one. The challenging part in my business is uh, software development and making sure that I have um, the people that do product development at the right quality level. And that might be typically typical for uh, technology. 
But 20 years ago, software development was a profession in itself. People could develop software and uh, they developed software for whatever business. Uh, they didn't, uh, it was not necessary to have any understanding of that business. The only thing they needed to do is programming. That has changed. Uh, software development is not some kind of iconic uh, uh, profession. It's just an engineering job. You have people doing road construction and you have people doing software development. Mm -hmm. And you need to understand what you develop software for. So you need to have an interest in the domain. So in my uh, uh, part of the business, I need people who understand traffic, who understand transport, who understand public transportation. They must be willing to uh, read scientific newspapers, uh, articles, etc., and understand how it works, uh, making a study out of it, and use software development as a tool, not as a purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's different uh, uh, in India compared to uh, Europe. In Europe, I think this this, uh, this status has already been achieved. People developing software, they have an intrinsic knowledge about the business um, and use the, the software development tools as a tool. In India, it's still considered software development as a profession and people do not care too much about uh, the actual business. And yeah. making sure that you select the people that love the business itself and want to create something that is put in life that's that's the challenge because people will not know that um at the moment you recruit them so it's it's about talent hunting yeah interesting and yeah interesting the, the Taj group for everybody who doesn't know this is, is a is a part of the the tata group so uh, the largest company in in india although reliance is maybe now even larger but uh uh, and indeed, uh, that's always what we hear also a lot of people saying, how can it be that those five-star hotels, the service is so excellent, and when I go out of this hotel, uh, the service becomes crap. So what's what's going on? There's a different, two different worlds uh, there. So I like that, uh, that example that you gave. And someone is asking, and that's of course something I would have asked as well, um, because, of course, and we're almost finalizing the, the webinar, um, but of course, the current situation with, with COVID is, uh, is absolutely very serious in India. Uh, you say you employ almost 300 people there. Uh, how, how is the situation at the moment? Uh, of course, office is, is closed, I, I imagine. Uh, so people are working from home. How, 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 is this, how is this working out for you? Yeah, it's a, it's it's a bad situation. Our local uh, local business, especially the business that uh, that is out on the roads, uh, that has more or less uh, uh, been stalled at present. Mm -hmm. um, uh, our outsourcing business, so the business where we develop uh, our products for uh, for Europe, um, that is continuing, um, and there is a lot of business. IT in general has is doing quite well during the COVID uh, crisis, but working from home in India uh, is really something different compared to working from home in uh, in Europe. Uh, people have different homes, and people are used to work in teams under direct supervision. That's how people were work. They were not. Um, trained, educated, groomed to work independently. Um, so when you take them out of their team and drop them home and you say, now your, your place to work has changed from the office to home, then there's a, a huge degradation in productivity. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's what we are, are experiencing. So um, um, I'm, uh, I'm hoping that the, uh, the lockdown will be relieved any moment. For us, it's, it's a real pain in productivity. So we have difficulties in making sure that uh, we can live up to our commitment to our clients in Europe uh, because of the, uh, of the pain we are experiencing uh, right, uh, right now. Hmm. I understand. Um, Jan, it's uh, almost 10.30. Um, I think uh, I would like to round off. Uh, thanks for your uh, time, your insights, and, uh, and your stories. Uh, the, 
has been uh, very, I think uh, people will, uh, will like it a lot. Uh, I have seen some of the questions. I, I, I put some of the questions uh, to you. Uh, for everybody who has been listening and watching, um, if you have any more questions to ask or specifically to Jan, please send them to us. We will make sure that, uh, that you'll get an answer. Um, and maybe as a follow-up, or I saw, saw this, a third of the listeners um, are not doing business in India yet, and they don't know if, if this is the way to go. Um, so we have developed a, 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 a yeah, basically a new product that's a, that's a that's a workshop, that's a tailor-made workshop to discuss with management teams uh, like uh, how they should go about their, their 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 sales strategy in India, their go-to-market strategy. So if you want to. Uh, say okay this has been very inspiring i want to make this next step please get in touch with us and we can organize a, a tailor-made uh, made workshop we will get the right people on board and you can have all uh, important players on your side uh, around the table and we can do a session uh, session like this um okay i want to round it off i want to wish you all a very good day uh, stay safe and healthy Jan, once again, uh, thanks for your time and um, uh, see you uh, soon, I hope. And to all of you, goodbye. Bye-bye.